Take your seats. Take your seats, please. My lecture will be about 40 minutes. And after that, I will give anyone the opportunity to ask me questions for about 15 or 20 minutes. So the whole thing will be one hour. And it is after that hour that we will do book signing. You can buy the books there if you want to, and I'll sign them here. We'll get back to that later. If you have a pendulum, this is a pendulum, mass m, length l, then you can derive, which I do in class, but I won't bore you with that, you can derive how long it takes for the pendulum to make one complete oscillation. And we call that the period of the pendulum. And I derive in class that that period equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. You already know what L is. If you don't know what pi is, you might as well leave right now. <laughs> and G is what we call the gravitational acceleration, which is approximately the same everywhere on Earth, but it is very close in Boston to 9.80 meters per second per second. And you will say, well, that's weird, meters per second per second. What that means is that if you have an object and you drop it from a very large altitude, very high, a few hundred meters high, and I dropped it at zero speed, after one second, it will have a speed of 9.8 meters per second. But after another second, it will add to that 9.8 meters per second, so it's twice that. And after three seconds, it's three seconds. So now you understand why it is meters per second per second. And so that's the meaning of G. There's something weird about this equation. Something that must go against your intuition. And you shouldn't feel bad because it also goes against my intuition. So we have the pendulum. And suppose I bring the pendulum all the way out here. We call that the amplitude of the pendulum. And we let it swing back and forth. There's a certain period. But now we bring it out only this far. It doesn't have to travel much, very much at all. Doesn't that make a difference in the period? The equation says, no, it doesn't. Because if it did make a difference, there would be in that equation the amplitude, which is not. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you, that it is quite remarkable that indeed that period is independent of amplitude if you don't go to extreme values of the amplitude. There's something else in here which is even more non-intuitive. And that is, doesn't it matter whether the bob, we call this the bob, whether it is one kilogram or 500 kilograms? You would think, well, that must be a difference, must make a difference in the period. But the equation says, sorry, it doesn't. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you too. We have here, by the way, if you ever want to test this pendulum, this equation for yourself, put in L equals one meter and use this number, you will get a period of 2.0 seconds. It's very easy to do at home. You make one, one meter, you put an apple at the bottom and you swing it. No, the one meter has to be accurate. You see that it's going to be 2.0 seconds. Our pendulum that we have here is really the mother of all pendulums. Look at it. <laughs> Fifteen and a half kilograms, and the length of this pendulum is 5.21 meters. However, you must understand that it is very difficult to measure that to very high accuracy. And so there is an uncertainty in the measurement of the length that we have to be honest about because we are physicist after all, and the uncertainty we estimate is about five centimeters. So we could be off by five centimeters. That means 
that is 1%, 5 centimeters is 1% out of 521. But since L only shows up as the square root, it means the uncertainty in the time that we predict is only half a percent. And if you don't see the reason why the 1% becomes half a percent, that's okay, then just forget about it. You take my word for it. <laughs> so now, I can make a prediction. So I predict, using this equation, that's all I do, I put in 5.21, I put in 9.80, I multiply by 2 pi, and I make the prediction that the period of that pendulum is 4.58 plus or minus 0.02 seconds. Why the plus or minus 0.02? Well, that is the half a percent uncertainty due to the square root of L. And you can immediately see that 2 is about half per percent of 458. So my prediction can be no better than that. Now comes the problem. I have to measure the period to convince you that it is independent of amplitude and to convince you that it is independent of mass. So the biggest problem now is Walter Lewin himself, which is my reaction time. How accurately am I able to make that measurement? That has nothing to do with our lack of knowledge of the exact length. Now, the last time that I gave this lecture with the pendulum is 12 years ago. I was 63. <laughs> and at that time, I told the class, my reaction time is a tenth of a second. And it was. <laughs> but now I'm 75. And so my reaction time is no longer 0.1 seconds. <laughs> what is it? Well, I do not know, but I have a feeling that if you want to be kind to me for a change, <laughs> let us assume that my reaction time at age 75 is now two tenths of a second. So if you can live with that, then every measurement that I make, no matter how long it is, it is uncertain to two tenths of a second. Do not confuse that with that 0.02. That has to do with the length. All right. So, I'm going to first make a, a period measurement at 5 degrees and then at 10 degrees amplitude. And I'm going to measure 10 periods, not one. Some of you may think, well, isn't that a waste of time to do 10 periods if you can get away with one? You will very quickly see why it is 10. You will see that. So the 10t is then going to be some number, plus or minus, my own inability, which is my 0.2 seconds reaction time. I can't change that. And so then I do it at 10 degrees, and then we get again 10t. We get a number, and then we get again plus or minus 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to demonstrate to you that within the uncertainty of the measurements, that I get the same numbers in all three cases, within the uncertainty. So, if you're ready for that, you see here the timer, that all of you can see, and here you see the pendulum, and I have two marks on the floor here. If I hold the bulb here, then it is five degrees, this is five degrees, and when I hold the bulb here, it is ten degrees. Timing is not easy. The best way to do it is to start the timing when the pendulum comes to a stop that is rather well defined. And then you let it swing ten times and then when it comes to a to stop, you stop it. And it would help me if you would count how many oscillations we have made. Because then I don't have to look at it all I have to do is when I come close to 10, I have to watch for the moment of stopping and and then I will end it. So, we'll do this first at 5 degrees. I'm going to start it when it comes here. Yeah! 
Okay, now you count. You're doing very well. <laughs> You're going to pass this course. Forty-five point seven. So that becomes that T. That means this whole equation now has to be divided by ten. And now you will see why I measure ten oscillations. So T is going to be four point five seven plus or minus point two divided by ten. That is plus or minus point oh two seconds. And you see, comfortably within the prediction. So maybe my reaction time is a little better than two tenths of a second. <laughs> Don't count on it because you haven't seen the rest yet. So, now ten degrees. That, that moment is crucial. That moment is crucial. That's where you can lose four tenths of a second and then you look like an idiot in front of your students. Now comes the hardest part. The hardest part is that we have to change the mass of this object. <laughs> and the way that I'm going to do that is prominently demonstrated on the cover of my book. <laughs> yes, I'm going to hang on that pendulum. It is a difficult demonstration. First of all, it is painful. It really is. <laughs> Second, the timing is tricky. Because when you look at the pendulum and when you see it stand still, you know, that is really well defined, plus or minus 0.1 seconds. When you are swinging yourself, however, <laughs> then you can only do it by sensing the moment that you think you stand still. And that's what I will do. And then you will do the counting. And this is very unpleasant. <laughs> it is. <laughs> or there's something else I haven't told you. If you're a good physicist, you will say, if you're going to sit on that bob, then effectively you bring the mass of the bob up, and so the length of the pendulum will shorten, and so you get a shorter period. And I know that too. <laughs> Therefore, I will have to stretch my body so that when it is here, that it is almost completely parallel to the floor. If I don't do that, 
I will not be able to convince you that the period is independent of the mass. And that makes it very difficult for me. So I will start it at some moment, you will see when, and then you do the counting. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yeah! You count! This happens sometimes. And in fact, nobody knows why. <laughs> I have to start all over. I did not stop it, I really didn't. Oh, it's still counting? Okay, I have enough energy to give it one more attempt, but not to give it two more attempts. Okay. You ready? Okay. hurts. <laughs> Can't you count a little faster? Tea <laughs> with Walter Lewin. What is it? 45.9 plus or minus 0.2 period is 4.59 plus or minus 0.02. I told you, physics works. <laughs> 